What do you want to do? I don't know. We don't have an intro. All right. Welcome to episode 11 of the Glazier Gamble podcast. I, as you can see here, am Michael Glazier. And I am Joe gamble we should start with um we should start with the thing coming out in two hour three Shang-Chi? hours and six minutes Shang-Chi? yeah well what did you I think say that's about it? that's what's hot right now let me look at our little notes here um there was a little uh, minute clip from it oh um, yeah it was, was released, released recently um, it a couple of times like i always yeah. try to yeah, we tried to break it down a little bit. Um, another abomination versus we assume Wong scenes. It looked like the uh, the glyph like blocking thing that the sorcerers supreme the sorcerers do. Uh, so I assume it's that. The one big takeaway I got from it was we had a s- small text back and forth today. Um, there's a dude that is fighting a a girl, and it looks like he's got the like extremist solution going through his body. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he gets, you know, hit by a couple daggers or whatever, but she like uh, stabs him a bunch. Yeah. And so, he's like, yeah, yeah, get, get him in there. Yeah. So then it, so it looked like it, just a giant fight. There's the, there's the big ring, which is like where the big fights are going down. And then, and then there's these little like side panels to keep my frame in here. Basically, if side you've ever panels. heard of the red light district in Amsterdam, where the girls are in like glass cases advertising themselves. So the, the sex workers are, are yeah. uh, lined up in glass cases, basically advertising themselves. Um, another good uh, way to describe it might be like the delivery, like where they hold the babies in hospitals is like a whole bunch of different glass rooms. Contain- yeah. yeah. That lined a hallway yeah. that you walk down. And there's little fights going down in each one of those little, little things. And so you thought there was the extremists. I, yeah, I think it looks like the ex- extremist extremist solution, or whatever. It, it looks spelled, like, I feel it. like it should be extremist, but I, I don't extremist. remember how they pronounce it in the. Yeah, movie. it just it looks like that. It um, does. However, it could. It also looks like when Kevin Bacon absorbed energy in X Men First Class, which could just be the available CGI technology they use, just yeah. looking similar. Um, I my thought was that it was Monstars from Space Jam. It looked a lot like the effects that were on the basketball when they were trying okay. to give when they were giving the guys their powers back in Space uh, okay. Jam, in the first Space Jam movie. All right. Um, I thought it looked like so I thought that might have been like a souped up Monstar. Okay. Mugsy Bogues, you think, or like Charles Barkley? I mean, Sean, that, it, Sean it was Bradley. Like the size of it was like six foot something, so it's not Mugsy. So I'm thinking more like uh. I don't know. Terry Crews slash Charles Barkley hybrid. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, I thought that was cool. My theory was so Aquafina in that little clip says, is he fighting referring to Shang-Chi? Is he fighting one of these? And that's when he says, No, he's gonna be fighting it. These are all small fights. He's gonna yeah. be fighting there. And then he points to where A Bomb is fighting Wong yeah. in the ring, like in the main <laughs> center stage. Right. Um my theory is because because she says one of these, that's insinuating that these are like all people with powers and abilities. Um, I think this is where they're going to potentially slide another mutant in because yeah. well, the apparently th- the arm, the guy with the blades, the blade arm, Razor Fist, Razor Fist is a mutant. Okay, I so, know that uh, in the comics, something very t- very tied to the Mandarin is stuff is Betsy Braddock. Which is Psylocke. Cool. Psylocke is tied to them. I think they like they clone her or they transfer her conscience into a um that's because she's supposed to she's European, I believe. That's where Brian Braddock is. So I assume they're from the same family lineage or whatever. Um, but then they like transfer her entity into a like an ethnic um ethnic woman and so she's that's why her appearance looks different sure that's like comic wise that's what happens i don't know if they're going to do that because that's super confusing um but yeah psylocke is tied to that i don't think you're going to see psylocke because... i don't think so that's a kind of a big character to throw in as an extra in a shang chi movie yeah um so. i would i would assume we're going to see somebody that looks like 
a side, like one of the smaller mutants that you might have seen in previous movies. I think you might see a little Easter egg of them in one fighting in one. Like sure. I wouldn't be surprised to see. Obviously, not something Jubilee. Like, Jubilee is of that. A origin. Darwin. Okay. Uh, like you'll see a Darwin, or maybe you'll see a not Banshee because that kind of you'd break the glass, but. You see somebody. You see somebody. I, like I see that. what you mean. I Maybe think the, an angel. The mute. Yeah, the, I mean the mutants are coming at some some point. Exactly. Um, and they've already they they had one in Black Widow. We have Razor Fist, like, and the rumor is there's going to be a Fox verse character, character in, in yeah. WandaVision, which we're all assuming is going to be Magneto or Phoenix. Those are mutants. Um, yeah. Rogue is. Rogue supposed to be possibly Captain Marvel too, which is spo- so they're like. It the looks Marvels. like they're sporadically adding mutants everywhere. So my theory is that they're going to add a mutant in Shang-Chi in one of those fighting cases. Even if they're not talked about, pay attention. I think it'll be in there. And next episode that we'll actually be able to talk about Shang-Chi. Yes. Yes, um, we will. I'm going to be looking for that. Keep your eye I think out. It's gonna be, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. I'm super excited for it. Oh, uh, so speaking of that, uh, Tim Roth is confirmed to be voicing Abomination in Shang Chi, I think that's same. kind of a no brainer considering he was he was already guaranteed he was already confirmed to come back in She Hulk. Yep. So for us to see him in Shang Chi, why would it be a different actor voicing him? Right. Right. That'd be right. dumb. So yeah, that was confirmed. That one just a quick little quick hitter, but yeah, you should have expected that. If you didn't expect that, you probably right. one of those people that maybe didn't see these leaks. So for those of you that didn't see it, he's gonna be back in She Hulk as abomination and he's the one voicing abomination in shang chi as well um i don't believe she hulk is a prequel or anything so that means we can also assume abomination will not die in this movie yeah yeah i don't think it i don't think it is either um, i don't think it's i think abomination is one of the ugliest creatures he in is Marvel. He, and he got uglier f- from the incredible hulk movie because he yeah. has there's better cgi yeah. um he's he it, they said that like his appearance is different. He's got like the, the fanged ears now, mm-hmm. which he does in the um, comics, but not whatever. But have you ever seen a natural bratwurst? Like an all natural bratwurst with the natural casing? Probably. I'll so, look it up. So it's like it's like a pinkish gray. All right. If you boil those, if you boil a natural cased natural bratwurst they turn to like this disgusting tan gray color okay or this beige gray color yeah. that is the color of abomination skin like he looks yeah. like a boiled bratwurst yeah he's and supposed to like look. i'm not sure if i'm supposed to be hungry i'm not supposed to like my wife hates brats so she probably would despise abomination yeah well he's a he should be ugly well, like, his name is abomination <laughs> <clears throat> right so, um, but yeah, he's ugly, and I cannot get over the fact of how ugly he reminds me of a boiled brat. And it's, yes. I hate boiled brats, I want them on the grill, I want them over a fire. Sure, yeah. but I grew up with boiled ones, and man, they just it just remind he just reminds me of a boiled brat. Like, if I were to bite into his skin, it would just be stretchy and snap. It, ugh, mm. it, ugh. God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, shang Chi's coming out. That's what we have to say about that. I've seen um, it in two days. Yep, seeing it in two days, and then two, next episode, forty-eight hours from now, we will be in the theater. Question of the day for people: We are gonna. We mentioned that we're gonna go see Shang Chi this weekend. Will you be seeing Shang Chi this weekend? Uh, let us know in the comments via Twitter, preferably via comments, so that we can interact immediately. Um, yeah, let us know. Will you be seeing Shang Chi uh, this weekend? This will be our first question of the day. Yeah, so will you be seeing it opening weekend, which will be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or since it's a holiday weekend, let's throw Monday in there as well. Sure. Will you be seeing it at all this weekend? There we go. Uh, do you want to do the sponsor? Quick between segments. Our sponsor? Yeah. 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 Do you do you want to let them know who it was this time? <laughs> I was I was gonna let you do it. Uh, oh um, so you're running the meeting, I mean. So all right. Um, <clears throat> well, we have our first channel sponsor here, which is no one. <clears throat> <clears throat> or, yeah. 
So we have a free sponsor. This our pod. This episode of the pod. This section of the podcast is sponsored by Glacier Gaming. Uh, <laughs> sponsored by our gaming channel that is on YouTube and Twitch, 7 p.m. to midnight uh, U.S. Central Time is the streaming hours. So feel free. Thank you to Glacier Gaming for sponsoring this podcast. <laughs> um, you gave us zero dollars. I appreciate it. You're welcome to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> being the representative of Glacier Gaming. We are here for them. They are here for us. That yeah. is... Okay. Uh, all right, uh, next little... So we talk, We got some shang chi information in there. We are going to go see that. Another movie that I would love to see and is one of my favorite... But well, he's actually my favorite Marvel character, Venom. Uh, Venom Let There Be Carnage was just confirmed will be PG-13. Um, I get why people are upset about that because they want rated R because it's Carnage and Let There Be Carnage was like the dead growth like the most grotesque right. comic series but there was also in captain america i saw captain america has a guy go through a helic helicopter or jet propeller and then blood trails behind the plane so it's not like they can't show violence it just really means that there's no nudity and there's they can't have more than two f it would be very very gru it's like okay carnage should have very gruesome violence yeah like, i agree very gruesome violence right you should um, see him po like he should stab people through maybe like the eye and head like yeah he, he should have what make the audience kind of cringe like oh yeah like and venom you should see him biting off heads right um <laughs> Uh, so I think it would be better rated R, but I think it's smarter for them to keep it PG thirteen because they can still keep the violence but attract a larger audience. Fans yeah, and there and... there should there should be more violence, right? Like yeah, I would be there's... fine if they did a Deadpool sort of thing, have a rated R as their regular version, and then have a PG thirteen version. Sure, sure. Like a uh, uh, Once Upon a Deadpool. You mean exactly. Yep. So do I would yeah. I think doing something like that more comic book movies should start doing that sort of thing because Deadpool yeah. that was a huge success. Obviously, that was when theaters were fully open and that sort of thing. But right. um, I really think I really think that they should have, especially with something like Let There Be Carnage, where you could probably delete an entire section of an action scene and not lose any quality in the movie. All right. And that whole section can make it rated R, but after you delete that whole section for PG-13, it doesn't ruin the movie for PG-13 people. It just enhances it for the rated R people. So yeah. I'm cool with it being PG-13. I'm not mad. Um, Venom is... The, the the new direction they're heading with Venom is kind of like almost an anti-hero funny guy. Which, yeah, that's what that's what they want to do. They want to do. You know what I mean? So Morbius is not going to... Is a, is a, not a villain he's an anti-hero he's part right. of the midnight suns you know he's so with uh, the directions that they're heading this is too surprising yeah and then you know craven i don't expect them to do a villain movie for craven no i expect craven to be an anti-hero too so so you're taken away from villains here but yeah um yeah it's pg-13 it was announced confirmed i'm not mad about it i'm still want, we're I'm still gonna, gonna see, see it. still gonna see that <laughs> we're with, still gonna the see weekend it, yeah. it comes out as well uh some other MCU news. One of my favorite actors in the world is Elijah Wood. As a person, he is amazing. I love his interviews. Um, he actually just did a Hot Ones interview this year, so I watched that. But I've watched other interviews with him. Um, he's very interesting to me. He dropped out of, for those of you who don't know, he dropped out of high school to do Lord of the Rings. So he's not even a high school graduate. Um, I don't know if he ever went back, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, he was 17 during Lord of the Rings. Um, and he dropped out of high school to go do those and just like, I don't know, he's very uh, inspirational guy. His fa he loves frozen pizza and he's just like a food foodie. Um, so I don't know, I can, I feel like I can relate a lot to him and not to mention he's an incredible actor. Right. So, um, but anyway, he just came out saying he wants to be in the MCU and like he basically said like who wouldn't want to be in the MCU. Yeah. A lot of people are saying that uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Oh, uh, yeah, he play. Yeah, he said himself. He's like, pretty sure my next step is uh, going into the MCU. He's going to he, be the he, villain in Far Cry Six for those yeah, of you who don't yep. know. <laughs> he's the villain in. Uh, he's Moff Gideon in The Mandalorian, and uh, he is the magic mirror in the show Once Upon a Time. 
Yep, he's the he's the bad dude in uh, Breaking Bad. Yeah, that runs he's, in place. Um, he's he's another great. one of those amazing actors. Yeah, but oh, he's the, he's like, actually he's actually the uh, villain of the the evil organization in the boys. He's in the uh, boys too. That's so, awesome. Yeah, but anyway, Elijah Wood. Uh, he said he wants to be in the MCU, and I can't think of anybody that has ever said before they were in the MCU that they want to be in it that has been bad. Like yeah. I, I can think of other people that have wanted to be in the MCU before they before they were in it. They said, I want to be in the MCU. And even sometimes they have a character they say they want to play. Elizabeth right. Olsen. Um, uh, Chris Pratt. The dude that plays, uh, the, guy, the guy that's playing Druig. I think. The guy that's playing Druig in... Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. These are well, all he... people that said they wanted to be, because Jake Gyllenhaal has wanted to be the original Spider-Man. Barry Kagan. Or K- Kogan. Barry okay. Kagan or Barry Kogan said, make me a superhero. And then he tagged at Marvel. And this was in like 2013. And now he's one of the characters in Eternals. So Exactly. So I can't think of anybody who's done a bad job. Elijah Wood has never done anything, in my opinion, that wasn't bad. If anything, people just don't like some of his projects because they're more artistic than cinematic. Yeah. Similar to um, um, Harry Potter. But, uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe, yep. the same thing. They're very similar styles of people, except Daniel Radcliffe said, sure, I would do in the MCU if they called me, but I've never gotten a call. So he didn't, yeah. he didn't advertise himself like Elijah Wood, but that's because Daniel Radcliffe prefer, prefers plays. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I would uh, do some unspeakable things to get Elijah Wood into the MCU. Um, I'm all for it. He is like 5'8". So, you know, Wolverine is what you're saying. <laughs> I don't think he could do Wolverine. Um, he, he would try, but you know, you get somebody like Elijah Wood to do maybe a Cyclops. Um, you could get him to do, I, I don't care. They can do the casting. I just think he could, he yeah. would, kill I think it. next week maybe we could get a professor X. And the last little thing about Marvel news uh, before we get to what if, and our new segment that we're doing here. Uh, recently, an uh, MCU producer said that the that New York City now, after the blip, is thriving. However, its citizens are not. So I took that as businesses and like underground, maybe crime, and that sort uh, of thing is going well. So possibly Hell's Kitchen could be thriving. A certain billionaire, millionaire, Wilson Fisk could be thriving. You mean? Right. Yes, but that, its citizens are not. Yeah, so which means there's probably almost, some organized crime and yep. businesses H- hand possibly. Uh, so speaking of Wilson Fisk, um, common villain for Wils- or common enemy of Wilson Fisk is Daredevil. Uh, recently, Charlie Cox stated um, he saw the rumors around um, everyone thinking his forearms were his hairy forearms in that Spider-Man scene where it was him. Uh, but people dissected the scene earlier, and the guy has a, a belly, which is not Charlie Cox. Charlie Cox is ripped. Um, the guy's got a belly, and uh, it, does, it doesn't appear to be him. I don't understand why, why Daredevil would slam the thing down, or Matt Murdock would slam that down. The um, theory that I saw was that uh, he's blind, so he didn't realize where the table was, and I thought that was dumb. Yeah, and then, uh, but Charlie Cox stated, those are not my forearms. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone's like, yeah, they're Matt Murdock's forearms. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think that is it's Matt not Murdock. Him. No, if anything, he might be in the same room, but he, no, that's not him. And ev- but everyone else is also saying he didn't say he's not in the movie. That's true. He did. So, and then he recently stated, I feel, I f- get a lot of anxiety when talking about this. It gave him anxiety to get asked about that. Um, just anything to deal with, like whether or not he's going to be in future MCU product projects, and it's not really like fair to ask him these questions. And I totally agree with him because if he if he says he those are his forearms, he gets in trouble with Marvel and Disney and stuff for leaking information. And then like look at Tom Holland. Tom Holland is still made fun of. <laughs> yeah, for Bruce leaking. or Mark Ruffalo is too. And Mark Ruffalo. So Mark Ruffalo and Tom Holland are still made fun of for leaking. If he says those aren't like he's not, if he says I'm not in the movie, 
then people get mad at him for spoiling it and then they're mad at him for not being in the movie even though it's not like his choice right and then if he says no comment like i don't want to answer that question people say he's an asshole because oh why don't you just say it like it's not a big deal it's like he has it is a lose 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 situation in that yeah like it is amazing for the interviewer like they can ask him a question that he has no escape from yeah and And, you know i think like arguably um i think in the back of our minds we're we're expecting the other two spider-men to show up Mm -hmm. at some point like it's gonna be shock yeah it's gonna be shock it's gonna be sweet um but like i'm gonna get just as giddy if i see if i see just him he doesn't need to be daredevil he doesn't need to be daredevil nope he needs to be matt murdoch yeah like he needs to walk into a courtroom with his with like a cane or walking yeah yeah and that would give that would give me chills like right. he doesn't he doesn't even have to wear the daredevil suit they could redo his suit. like yeah and just with the way he is as a lawyer if he was interviewing or if he was talking to peter parker he'd be like he, you could hear him say he could he would just be like peter parker stop talking like if they were in the courtroom he would be like peter parker stop talking You're just right. straight up tell him that and then peter would be like oh <laughs> like so, so. Overall, uh, I think it's unfair to ask Charlie Cox. Yeah, and he's just going to get slammed with questions for the next so, three months. Um, so. I'm glad he kind of sta- made that statement. I do hope he's in the movie, but I don't think we should be asking him these questions. When yeah. Any actor or like we shouldn't be asking any of them. Like they, it's a lose, lose, lose situation. And if I'm them, I don't want to do interviews with those people anymore. If yeah. I'm, like why? Why? <laughs> you that's it's like asking somebody a personal question like hey before we do this interview please keep this off the table and then they ask it anyway yeah like with adam driver that happened in that radio show and then he walked out and people got really mad at him it's like no he told you don't talk about this and they did yeah so Um, like let's just let's just be good to be good to the talent they act like just yeah come on So another thing uh making fun of tom holland and mark ruffalo for spoiling things um someone was in wherever they're shooting uh, Moon Knight, they they saw the uh, they saw Oscar Isaac outside of a hotel, right? So they're like, "Oh, can I get a picture, or whatever?" And this girl took a picture of Oscar Isaac, and not like an hour later, Mark Ruffalo came walking walking by into that same hotel. So everyone, so they got a picture with Mark Ruffalo too, and um, so then the, then they asked him they're like well, are, you're at the same place they're filming moon Knight. like what are you doing what are you doing there and he's like you know what i've been i i'm sick of sp- like spoiling things so i'm not gonna say anything i saw like, that too um like could hulk be in moon Knight? sure yeah could he be there supporting oscar isaac and ethan hawk also sure so could he be there for something completely unrelated also sure could yeah. he be there as a consultant and have yeah. nothing to do with the movie also could like yeah so this is what i'm talking about like they, they they could be involved in so many things like when john favreau is somewhere they're not assuming he's acting they're assuming he's like they're assuming he's oh are, are you a producer credit on this yeah. like right. i just i think it's unfair the stuff the way that people, right like i get that they're making millionaires and they're like yeah and dance, like they have dance. to do they have to do publicity publicity at some point right so you have right. to you have to interview mark ruffalo before or you have like say shang chi you have to interview simu liu before this you're not it's like you don't just sit there and hound them with questions that are spoil the movie that's stupid you know? right that's stupid you you ask them about maybe their creative process you maybe ask them about previous projects that they've done and how it compares to being in something like the mcu yeah. like how does it feel you as an actor your goal is to be in a memorable role that yeah. uh, people will always think of when they think of this character when you're entering the mcu even when you're not a main character people are always going to remember you for this you're, how yeah, does that feel yeah, How? and like especially with Simu Liu, like you, he wanted to be Shang Chi right. too. So, but now Aquafina, like she's Nora from Queens. She has her old YouTube series. Right. But now, after after Shang Chi comes out, if especially if it's a massive hit, a lot of the time when you hear Aquafina, you're gonna think Raya. Katie from uh, Katie from uh, Shang Chi. You're yeah. gonna think Shang Chi and Raya the Last Dragon. Like, yeah. and you can ask her. Like, you worked with Disney now a couple times. What is what is more intense to you, being an animated dragon or being in a live action character where you play a character you've played in other things? But now when people see you, they're gonna be like, "Hey, like, yeah, right." 
Like yeah. these are the questions that you can ask. It's still entertaining for the viewer, but now you're not pissing off the actor. Yeah. Like if I yeah. feel Charlie Cox, I would I would much rather interview. An we actor. will interview you and ask you nothing about the MCU. We will ask you about your Daredevil series, that and then and working with uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, working with. Um, Finn Jones, uh, right? Well, that's another thing. Like, we could say that, like, we're not going to allow you to bad. We we are not going to tell you to bad mouth a previous, uh, like, a previous person you've worked with. But we've been the. It's been told by people that have worked on the movie or on the show that Finn Jones refused to put in extra time and extra work to become his character Iron Fist. And you know, but that- but like that, he was it was it was good in Defenders. Like he was good in the Defenders thing when he was surrounded by people. Like maybe he got carried by. You know, right. and Charlie then, Cox, like, as Christian opposed to Peter. Vincent D'Onofrio, who stole the people, show when he was many people, right. every care, every movie he's been in Jurassic World. Apparently, people that worked with him said that he was actually like hateable. You could genuinely hate his character because of how well he was playing them. And yeah, in uh, Law and Order Criminal Intent, people said that he was uncomfortable to be around sometimes because yeah, how was it into his character? So yeah, how was it working with John Bernthal? Is he as intense as he is? Like, right. You you've dealt with such a wide variety of actors what's that like like i feel like that's an entertaining question as opposed yeah. to hey those are your forearms, those are forearms yeah yeah like, i just hate that and i feel yeah. like the, re- the interviewer should have done more work you know? so but what if episode four just happened go. uh for me it's the best episode yet so t'challa's episode what if t'challa were star lord was my favorite episode um it was episode uh, for me it went episode two three or two one three and okay. then now for me, it's four, two, one, three. Sure. Um, yeah. T'Challa episode to me, I never felt sad. Like it, it was almost like a constant happiness episode. Like you just felt yeah. good. You were thinking about how good Chadwick was doing. The character was amazing. Um, you heard about how good he turned Thanos of all people into like a good guy. Like yeah. everybody, Korath is now good, like on the good guy side. Like you just felt really good in that episode. And it was like, a, nope, this is episode's a, nine out of ten it just makes you feel great all right and it was done well original storyline this episode episode four um with sorcerer strange strange supreme doctor supreme whatever however you uh, want to say it uh supreme strange i think it's supreme strange yeah. um but uh, however you want to put it uh was the exact opposite it was almost a constant sadness except for maybe a few things like with the obang interaction um where, yeah. he, where he was like strange that's a that for a mean. split second i thought that was going into uh dr voodoo brother voodoo or whatever oh, i thought it was going that way but then i was like no nah, they, they wouldn't do that yet but uh it was just uh, it was so depressing um it never really got better and then it ended stayed depressing yeah like um yeah. Like the end of the T'Challa one, it ends with something like dark and sinister with ego showing up at Dairy Queen with yeah. But like, nope, it ended with just just, just him in his little. He tried to do the um that like mystic thing where magic can happen inside the circle or inside that's whatever that figure, and then it doesn't affect the outside world. That's what he was trying to do, but then it ended up just like collapsing on him, and he's just in there, he's, and his he's universe is destroyed. In what looks like a purple geode. At the end of the episode, geode, that's it, looks like, it, it looks like a little geode. Um, I saw somebody try to theorize that that was the Power Stone. It does, doesn't look anything like the Power Stone. But, um, yeah, he's just stuck in this little area, and that's how the episode ends. He's stuck. Yeah. And his universe is destroyed yeah, around him. The episode, we'll just kind of go through it, give you a little breakdown. Spoiler alert. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Um, <laughs> so uh, it starts with the episode is about what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands. So what if he? What if his true love dies instead of losing the ability to use Doctor Doctor Christine Palmer? Yes. So instead, they're they're going to an event after he performs a hemispherectomy, which is they remove half the brain. It's an experimental procedure. It is a real procedure. For those of you who don't know, I actually have a cousin or my mom's cousin. I don't know how that would relate. His cousin once removed, whatever. Um, I actually have my mom's cousin had that um, where they remove like half the brain. He apparently performed one of those surgeries. So like a risky one. So that's why he was. And he, um, Dr. Strange is the, or Stephen Strange was the kind of 
the kind of person to to not do that. Like he would, or he he's obviously a very successful doctor, but he would. There was some point where he was going through his car in the original movie where he was swiping when the procedures were like they there was no hope. You know, what right? I mean? yep, so yep. he was basically deciding keeping his whether success. or not people. Yeah, making sure that he always had a successful surgery so that he didn't get a bad reputation. Um, but yeah, they were on a way to like to celebrate that event, and then instead of getting into the car crash that initially caused his him to lose his hands, he saves them. Um, but then he gets hit by a terrible driver behind them that yeah. is going 200 miles an hour, slamming yep. back for some reason. It's weaving behind them. So. Um, and then that car crash kills Christine instead. Um, and that's when he decides to pursue magic. And that's when he decides to like become Sorcerer Supreme. Yep. Um, except now his motivation, he, and now that he actually has the ability to use his hands, he picks up the magic really quick. Yep. Instead of like in the original movie where it's really difficult for you to use his sling ring without his hands. Yeah. Um, and because of that, except now his motivation is to be able to eventually reverse time and save Christine, which this is, I imagine this is what he went through in and or in infinity war when he's going mm-hmm. through all the realities or whatever. I envision that's kind of, that's what we saw. We basically saw him going through the realities. Yes, or going through yeah, the bunch of different yeah realities. Um, and in each one, Doctor Christine Palmer dies. So. Yep. So if you've never seen the, have you ever seen the movie Time Machine? I've seen Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> well, in the movie The Time Machine, um, it's with Guy Pierce who is in Iron Man three. He's the villain in Iron Man three. Um, but Guy Pierce that he's the lead in The Time Machine. He's a professor back in like the olden days before like in new york sure. before they had vehicles like cars like back then um who his the woman he proposes to after they get after he proposes after they're going for a walk in the park she gets killed and then he invents a time machine to go back and save her and then he goes back in time to save her and uh instead of going for a walk in the park he decides to take her to the flower shop and he walks inside to go get flowers, and then outside she gets run over by a horse. And he realizes no matter how many times he goes back in time, she's going to die. There's, you can't reverse it. Right. And then you learn at the end of the movie that you can't go back and save her. We learn from Jeremy Irons, who's the one of the guys. He's the one telling him this. Um, tells him you can't go back and save her because if you go you create a paradox if you go back and save her you don't invent your time machine which is basically what you're destined to do was invent your time machine you're meant to be here and he ends up going hundreds of thousands of years into the future where the the moon has exploded earth has gone through another ice age like anyway love that movie it's actually one of my favorite movies of all time it includes my favorite quote which is we all have our own personal time machines memories that take us back and aspirations that move us forward or something like that so um amazing movie but this i immediately thought of the time machine as this movie as this episode was going on and sure i was like eventually he's going to come to the realization if he goes back in time over and over christine's gonna be dead but instead he decides to try to become powerful enough to reverse the it is considered a Oh no! Well, okay, so he, he keeps it? going back, and he realizes that that he's not strong enough, and then the ancient one shows up. What is that moment in time called? A s- absolute, an point absolute in time. point. Yeah, and they capitalize it in the captions. Absolute yeah. point. Um, which means it is a proper, like it is actually something you're supposed to know. The ancient one tells him it's an absolute point. You can't change it. And he said, yeah. "There's been somebody in the past that has changed absolute point, which was Cogliostro." Cogliostro. Cagliostro. Cagliostro. What, something like that, yep. Um, and so he goes to find the lost books of Cagliostro. The Ancient One tries to stop him, but he is able to, for, for the time being... You learn think, later. We yeah. learn later, but he escapes. Gets out, you'll have to find me first. Or something yes. Like um, and he goes to the books of Cagliostro, where he meets Obeng. Um, Obeng greets him and says, like, what's your name? Or whatever, and they, or whatever. And he says, "Strange." No, he says, uh, "Armani." It's like right. it's our Ar- it's Armani. You, your outfit is strange, and he says, "It's Armani." And then he said, like, "No, right, it's sorcerer, 
Sorcerer Armani, yeah. So all right, Sorcerer Armani, and then he's like, "No, it's strange." He's like, "No, strange than any other name," which is from that's what Kaecilia Kaecilia says to him in the in Doctor Strange the movie. Yeah. So that's a little Easter egg callback there. Doesn't really weigh on the story. We don't see yeah. too much more of Obang after don't, that. We don't see Kaecilius at all either. Um, but then Doctor Strange finds the lost books of Cagliostro and learns about absorption in which he's able to absorb the power and of entities and like their live their basically their soul but not it's like their entity their their yeah. aura um and he in- initially tries to absorb shuma gorath which i believe is just gorath at this point and, and it is also a different gorath it was confirmed this is not the same one that's in Cap- the captain the first, carter one the captain carter it's a different one also a different one from the one that's going to be in multiverse of madness so toss that in there take that however you will but then shuma gorath is too strong or gorath is too strong for him so they send him back through his portal and he says i'll be back for you later then um we find out he spends over 200 years or 300 years and he just says centuries yeah absorbing different entity entities he starts Um, small and works his way up power wise yeah he absorbs um he went through and um, by the way, Obang is the official librarian for the books of Cagliostro. Just wanted to toss that in there. But um, he starts using dark magic, chaos magic, and orange magic throughout those centuries, showing that he is becoming evil or dark, and he has to use other versions of magic and power in order to do so. Um, and so how he's changing. He absorbs them through eyes, his eyes and mouth which I think is supposed to represent how he's absorbing their aura, their entity. Like it is not something natural because if it was something that was technically supposed to happen, you'd kind of see it through his hands. I think like right. you see with other people that use magic and Mar- right. Marvel. Yeah. The, the mystic arts is very like, yeah. So. This is where he ends up getting his cape. Like, he, he absorbs somebody and takes their cape. Yep. Um, he then absorbs somebody that looks like, a garden gnome this is like the first thing. yeah yeah the garden gnome. he absorbed like a garden gnome um and then he absorbed a corvanite which corvanite looks like uh corvanite's a new pokemon from sword and shield it's like okay. this giant steel bird he absorbed something that looked like okay. that he followed followed by a dragon that looked like a lot like shenron okay. uh, so I, I went through he absorbs a garden gnome corvanite shenron then cerberus yeah, definitely a Cerberus, yeah. Um, and then after that is the Horn King from uh, Black Cauldron, is what it looks like to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's and the then one. some weird looking bat thing. Uh, so that's like an order of like the things he absorbs, and he just absorbs like all these different creatures. And afterwards, the Watcher has his own narr- little narration, some exposition stating, um, Doctor Strange is on the wrong path. He could intervene and warn him that this is the wrong path and the fate of his universe isn't worth um, risking. Uh, The fate of his universe isn't worth risking the safety of all others. However, he says that there's no way this Doctor Strange would listen. Yeah. Um, I think this ties directly to Spider-Man No Way Home. I think that this is uh, what's going to, like, if we see when we see Doctor Strange opening the multiverse, there's a good chance that that opens the opportunity for what well, like we said. He's this strange supreme is ends up in a dark like geode. I think it's potential that he some he gets access to leave that geode through the multiverse being torn open. Yeah, because his universe no longer exists, but right. he exists. But he exists in the time like his universe is now. That yeah, geode. whatever that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I do think it ties into Multiverse Madness and Spider-Man No Way Home for sure. Yeah. Um, he then con- continues absorbing entities. One that looks like Sven from Frozen. Yeah. Then another dragon that's like a, a dragon eel looking thing. Yeah. Then a giant wolf, a giant snake, a two-headed muscle man, and then so many more. All the rest are blended and mixed with Doctor Strange's face so we mm-hmm. can't see exactly what they were. Finally, the last thing he absorbs is Shumagorath, five of its tentacles, not the whole thing, but apparently right. absorbing those tentacles was able to kill Gorath, is what the creators of the well, show it like, said. Okay, it like went back into the portal. Or like it he, looked he, like it he went he back. Cut the, he cut the portal. So then, right, and Gorath the, is supposed to continue growing. 
yeah, the, the it being it should still be on the other side. Exactly, which so. is why I, which is why I think it's going to also tie into Multiverse of Madness again because Gorath is now going to be attacking Doctor Strange because yeah. like, you took my tentacles. Yeah, but it's yeah, but I, I our mean, Doctor Strange isn't going to know. I have I have but, more on on Doctor Strange later where I think there could be a lot of smoke right. when it comes to. Uh, but I, I think they're doing that because I think I think Gorath is going to be after our universe is Doctor Strange and our Doctor Strange is going to be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Because it's this universe is Doctor Strange that took his tentacles. Yeah, yeah. Not our Doctor Strange. So yeah. I think that's what happened there. Um, then we find out that when Ancient One and him, when Ancient One was trying to stop him from doing this and trying to stop this absolute point, she split the timeline that they live in so that there was the doctor strange in this universe who was able to overcome Christine's death. Um, this whole episode ha- is like a complete artistic point, which of is view. more like our, our doctor strange, which the, is a the lot one, more like our doctor. Yeah. Strange. That's what our doctor strange would do. Cause he was like, when it comes to like you or the kid or the time stone, like I'm going to choose the time stone. I'm going to do what's best for the reality rather than you two people. Like, right. Yeah. A lot more rational. As yeah. like ra- rationality over emotion. Yeah. And uh, this whole episode I love because of how artistic it is. It, it is like a cinematic masterpiece in a 30 minute episode. It is, it is art. It is deep. It is insightful. Both Dr. Strange's go through all stages of grief. They go, they go through um, s- denial, anger, bargaining, depre- depression, right. acceptance. They go through all of it and it's shown in physical acts in their face in what they say. And both of them go through it in different times. Like yeah. the evil one doesn't go oh, through I, it until the very I, end. I think um I think the it was my favorite part was it was very true to what Doctor Strange is. And Doctor Strange, if you've seen the first one, which you should have, or just anything with Doctor Strange, when Doctor Strange was fighting Thanos on Titan, just all the visuals with Doctor Strange is just amazing. It is. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, but we do we find out that there's like basically a good and evil Doctor Strange in this universe. One that is they're both sorcerer supreme, it's just one is evil supreme that absorbed all these different entities trying to become strong enough to stop an absolute point and the one that we have now that the ancient one believes is the only being strong enough to stop this doctor strange so he works with wong and preparing to fight this other doctor Strange. yeah while wong is getting deteriorated in his reality because the entire world as doctor strange is absorbing all these entities and becoming more powerful the evil one the world around them is starting to crumble because as has been explained if he does go back in time and change the absolute point the world will cease to exist because similar to time machine if he reverses christine's death that will stop it'll create a paradox stop him from becoming sorcerer supreme in which he would not then be able to reverse her death destroying the world because that paradox would exist and split yeah. so um while he's working with wong they actually send the guardian vashanti spell the protection spell on him um you guys might recognize this it is confirmed is the same ruins runes sorry not ruins runes if you go watch wandavision again which i went back and looked at the episode to compare the rune shapes they are the same runes in WandaVision that they use protection spells that stop other magicians from using magic in that area. Right. Those sure. are the same ones they put and attach to his face to protect him from yeah. getting absorbed by the other strange. Yeah. So they use the protection uh, Guardian Vashanti spell on him. The, I'm, I'm familiar with the Book of Vashanti. I'm, sim- I'm a f- familiar with the singer. Oh, that's Ashanti. Yeah. Um, well, then, eventually, then the evil Strange and Doctor Strange fight at the point of Christine's death in time. They go back to the point where she dies, and they fight each other. The one Strange, the evil Strange, tries to convince the other Doctor Strange that he's the right one, and then the good Doctor Strange is like, no, you're overcome by grief and emotion. Yeah. You're not thinking rationally. They fight. Um, and that's where it's very obvious um, that the strange Supreme is using black magic, chaos magic, and yeah. orange magic. And um, strange Supreme destroys our strange's cape. And um, at that point, our strange blasts the evil strange and thinks he's won. But the evil strange had turned into our strange's shadow and then overtakes him. 
yeah. and goes inside his head and tries to trick him by projecting himself as Christine and Christine tells him like, this is the correct thing. Like, bring me back. You love me. I love you. But then he's like, no, you're not you. Sure, yeah. To which then Dr. Strange, the evil Dr. Strange starts destroying our strange and ends up breaking through the spell and absorbing the good Dr. Strange and become right. officially because being split into two was making him not a whole person. Right. So he wasn't ever going to be strong enough to do what he needed to do. Um, so then he was able to become one and become whole. And he reverses the absolute point. But in doing so, he becomes a little bit of every creature that he had absorbed. And um, when he does that, Christine is terrified of him. Yeah. And so he puts himself back into what he did look like. But at that point, she's already, she realizes what he has done to get to do what happened. And then everything is wasting away. Right. And, and then the watcher makes his point or whatever. Right. Um, we then see, like, Christine sees what's happening. The world is crumbling around them. And he that, tries to stop it by making, making the, the magic sphere. He tries thing. to create the magic the sphere magic. to protect him as it's crumbling. And then he starts calling out for the watcher saying, I sensed, I've sensed your presence. I know you're there. Help us. So he yeah. had gotten so powerful, he could sense the Watcher. Take me, take me, don't doom this world. Uh, and the Watcher tells him it's basically too late. Your uh, actions have consequences. Your actions have consequences and all that delicious stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we actually get to see the Watcher's body in that scene. He shows himself fully. Doctor Strange calls him a god. He says, I am not a god. So that was a fun little thing. Like he's not a God. Um, he's just a being and he says he won't help him out and tells strange. This is your fault basically. And then he looks down at Christine in his arms. Dr. Strange does. And Christine's last words are Steven. What did you do? Yeah. Which was super heavy. <laughs> um, and then the world ends around him and he's stuck in this geode alone. And he's basically alone with Asahi. He can't go anywhere. There is no world. He can perform magic in that sphere. That sphere is okay to perform magic in. So, uh, but what? Well, and we don't know the extent of magic. We don't know because, like, yeah. we're assuming there's probably no dark dimension in this little Infinity, world. Like, yeah. So it's not like he can leave it. Yeah. So he can create his own food, and like, I'm sure he can keep himself alive. But that's about it. Yeah. Um, and then the episode ends, and the first image you see is Doctor Strange's office with with his window and the emblem of the Sanctum Sanctorum. Um, which, when I look at it, I it, when when we saw for those of you who saw Loki, Kang, he who remains, they're different people, but he who remains when the timeline splits out his window, it looks like the emblem of the Sanctum Sanctorum. Right. Um, it looks purposeful, and I think that they show that <clears throat> image first on purpose. Um, it also, the song that plays over those credits is eerie and just beautiful. I yeah. absolutely loved it, and apparently it was taken from Endgame, so no wonder I loved it. Yeah, It was very... It that was, movie's all right. <laughs> it, was a, it was a beautiful, beautiful song, good imagery, um, just super dark, artistic. Yeah incredible episode last time i checked on imdb it was a 9.3 out of 10 i gave it a 10 out of 10 it is um really it's hard to find fault in that episode yeah like, if you the only fault is if you wanted some happiness there's just <laughs> was there wasn't any yeah. there were some like jokes that were made by strange but that's about it All right um, i uh yeah you said you mentioned kevin feige and we both saw this kevin feige had a lot of say in this episode he Dude. uh he wanted to make sure dr strange in this specific story was right yep um in regards to dr strange and just in in you know his eyes um so kevin feige this is the episode he has had the most input on uh the most uh, disney pro disney plus project he has had the most input on and he had something to help with in every scene you saw so that part of why this movie was so good is because the highest ranking person in marvel made sure that it was right um it was i if if you could watch one episode of one if this is what if this is the one so far like 
this is the one. I think episode two portrays what the show is about the best. Like, I think sure. Like, it's when you think of the pro, the premise of what if, like, what if this happened and how different things could be. What the second episode portrays yeah. that. Yeah, but I think um, in terms um, of like a standalone episode four, one hundred. Yeah. Uh, so ancient one and in doc in the original doctor strange ancient one told doctor strange don't mess with dark magic and then it came to be that she was messing with dark magic yep um yep. so she was messing with dark magic and the dark dimension to pull power from blah blah, blah you know to do things and it's um, partially why she's able to maintain life after death right and so um in this one it it basically was strange going too deep down the rabbit like too deep down the rabbit hole and and um t- getting too dark i mean it was a very dark episode too Super much dark. of the dark dimension and um to the point where he yeah. was using chaos and black magic yeah so if he's strong enough to have chaos magic with which the scarlet witch is you know the only person that really uses chaos magic um that's intense so overall um this episode was like a piece of art it was absolutely incredible and i loved it um i the i thought the stages of grief representation was incredible i thought the correlation with the tv the movie time machine was amazing um just just overall i can't i can't recommend this more it and remember this show is canon um which takes me to our next point of the show's creators said that this episode was the one of all of the what if episodes that will have the most ramifications for the future of the MCU. Sorcerer Supreme will be encountered at some point, most likely. Um, and my question is: is will he be encountered as the bad guy of a future film? Or is this um, does it have the most ramifications because we saw the interaction with the watcher? Um, and so we might potentially see the watcher in future projects and potentially interacting with other heroes yeah such as multiverse of madness um, yeah i mean the sorcerer the evil sorcerer supreme might come into multiverse of madness um i think the i think you've got you got two big names when you think of multiverse of madness that have been linked with dr strange as well um you know wanda could be the villain i don't know if they want to do that i don't i don't like she kind of portrayed the villain in WandaVision. Yeah, she, she looked... And she said yeah. that she was completely different direction as that character. Yeah. So um, I don't know what she's going to be in this that movie. Um, uh, there's, you know, from way back in the day, Doctor Strange 2, when Scott Derrickson wanted to make uh, Doctor Strange a horror movie, that's what he originally wanted to do. He wanted Nightmare as the main villain. Um, obviously uh with wanda wanda's arc and dr strange's arc um mephisto is always a always an option so Um, i think marvel said so one of the theories was that in no way home that dr strange is actually mephisto yeah they one a spokesman for marvel actually came out and said fans are getting ridiculous that is not mephisto and like flat out told everyone that's not yeah. mephisto yeah so i people, don't stop stop <laughs> mephisto mephisto will show up when mephisto needs to show up and i think it's going to be surrounded with a ghost rider and then um when we start getting into more demons yeah blade more be it's like yeah we're, the, we're, that yeah you because well, we, yeah i think people are stretching a little bit they are but like with uh, in the sense of like this episode of what if being into ramifications of doctor strange multiverse of madness the big uh, thing from big thing for me in this episode like you said in multiverse of madness is um she went she called upon ancient one called upon the dark dimension this is where i was going to go earlier and i i forgot i lost my train of thought sure. um ancient one split him and caused there to be two the, what we know about the multiverse is multiverse is the two big things are reality and time. Yeah. Reality yeah. and time. So um, throughout different timelines is essentially like different realities. That's why we get female Loki, kid Loki, stuff like that. Um, in this one, there's two different, two different timelines in the same thing. 
And so in Multiverse of Madness, you're gonna you could get two timelines, you could get 10 timelines, you could get 50 timelines, and 50 different Doctor Stranges, one of them being the sorcerer. It, 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 it could go anywhere. It could um, go anywhere. What I think is interesting is that multiple timelines can exist in the same reality. Yeah, like yes. That. So that's that's very weird. Um, too. Because then you think about it that there was a separate timeline or reality where there was just the one Doctor Strange who was successful the whole time and he was never split into two. There was another reality where there was the good Doctor Strange and he never decided to become evil, but Christine still died. Right. Like those are and then there's the one that we saw in What If, where Christine died and he was split into two by the ancient. Yeah. So, like, all three of those are probably different realities that existed, but in this one, two timelines existed yeah. in the same reality. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I wonder if it was like, if it was like you're going this way and all of a sudden you got one going up. I can't do that. I can't bend like that. And one going down. So, it's like now you, that's what the timeline looks like. You know, right. like in yeah. like our sacred timeline was just one flat thing. But right. it's like now there's is there did it split so, and there's so I two? feel like it could be similar to how she represented it in I think it's Infinity War. Yeah, where she said one branched off. Right. right. And then they kind of were looked like a DNA strand where they were like interweaving. Um I think that could be it. And then that center, like it could be like interweaving timelines. And then a center one is the one where they never get split into two. Right. And the true timeline is supposed to be the one where she died. Like in their universe reality, the true timeline is supposed to be the one where she dies, Christine dies he, yeah. where Christine dies, but then he doesn't go evil and he yeah. still pursues magic. Like, and then he becomes sorcerer Supreme fastest. And he's the strongest for Like, I think right. that's supposed to be that one's true time timeline, but um, yeah, I thought that was extremely interesting. Um, speaking of multiverse of madness, we have a lot on there. Um, Owen Wilson and Sophia DiMartino are apparently going to be reprising their roles. Yep, that's that, which uh, which could make sense. I mean, if there's different multiverses, Kang has got to be in one of them. Um, and so I, I don't, I don't know. I, I saw something earlier that said. Um, let me find this real quick. Um, so Those apparently, yeah, yeah. So apparently, Marvel is possibly leaking rumors um, to throw everybody off the scent of what could happen in Multiverse of Madness, and I would believe it because I've seen probably there's probably if you go back to before this phase even started, back to end, back to Endgame. Um, there's been probably 100 or more rumors regarding Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So oh, there's yeah. no there's way that all so of them many. are true. There's no way that's all, all of them are true. No. Nope. Um, the only one that we know for sure is that Wanda's in it. Like, because that's that's confirmed. So anything, anything can happen. And so I think that you take all of these uh, rumors for Doctor Strange with a grain of salt, just like we always say, because anything could happen. You know, we don't we don't know it's just like uh like we talk about sports a lot um just like around the draft time people teams put out 50 players they're interested in so that you don't know the what you're so confused about the one actual player that it's just a <clears throat> dartboard throw at this point right with marvel movies they've come to the realization that that's what they have to do they have to throw out 50 theories and leaks and because it's just a dartboard the fans can guess which one is going to be actually it one of them is probably right but it lo- perfect visual actual example no way homes whiteboard of potential yeah names names they names, literally yeah. put out a bunch of different names just to mess with people and yeah the um jacob ba- jacob Battleon, uh zendaya and tom holland all put on their instagram feeds a different title like mm-hmm. homesick uh-huh. uh if that's a perfect example. This is what Marvel's going to probably do from now on because of the way fans are with theories. Yeah. So take it all with a grain of salt. You're going to hear a million things. Um, people have mentioned Agatha coming back to Multiverse of Madness. I don't think that's happening, but that's been mentioned. People have mentioned yeah. uh, Mephisto. I saw I don't Thor. Think that's Thor. I saw today Thor could be in it. Like it just Thor, which they could be talking about Jane Foster now, or they could be talking about Chris Hemsworth. They could be talking about Party Thor. They could be talking about Throg. They yeah. could be like at this point, it could be anything. So look <laughs> at the ones that are most plausible and think about those ones, but the ones that aren't. Like, yeah, Charlie Cox might be in it as 
uh, Matt Murdock, but he might not be in it as Daredevil. Charlie Cox might be in it as Daredevil and Matt Murdock. Like, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, just think about. He that. could just be, like, he might not be in it at all, but we might, might not pass be in it at all. Street, might pass the street and it'll say Nelson and Murdock. You never you might, like. We might not have a single theory that's coming out. Moon Knight or one of these TV shows might show up in one of these big movies first and we don't even know about it yet. Like, there's somebody we might not even think about. Nightcrawler might randomly Elijah, show up. Elijah Wood as Nightcrawler. I think they should have um, somebody with an accent. Yeah. As opposed, to, but I'm okay with that. I, I'll, I'll take Elijah. Wood. I'll take Elijah Wood as Mystique. That just just give me Elijah Wood as anything, man. Um, but yeah, like all of those, all of those um, could be real. All of them could be fake. One of them could be real. You don't yeah. know. Um, but we like talking about it. Yeah. Just, to, just in case one of them are. We theor- we take one one rumor, theorize what it could do. And then uh one one uh we'll just do this little thing here. Um if, for those who watch uh Walking Dead or have seen Avengers Endgame, um or no Inf- Infinity War Endgame and Endgame, um the person who plays Red Skull is not whoever played Red Skull in the past. It is Ross Marquand. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. We like so, Ross Marquand. Yeah, so Ross Marquand plays Aaron in The Walking Dead, um, he, and he plays the new. He's the new Red Skull. So um, For I was going... that are fans of LGBT representation. Aaron is a uh, gay character in Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so that's... yeah, he he takes. He also he's such a such a cool character. He actually takes some of uh, Rick Grimes' um, storyline. He gets his hand cut off and he gets the little spike gauntlet thing. So, um, yeah, he's a big of enough character to get the main character's story. From um, the comic, yeah. From the comic. Um, so I will be going to a, a convention next weekend. Uh, not next weekend. Yes, next weekend. Yes, the 10th, 11th, and 12th. On the 11th at 12 p.m., Ross Marquand will be at a meet and greet. At It'll that be, convention and go ahead and t- drop the name of the convention where it's at. So it is, it's a, uh, it's Crypticon. They run out of, uh, my cousin has been doing it, uh, in Kansas city, been running it in Kansas city for 15 years. Um, and they want him, they want him or um, him and my, yeah, they want him to run the mini Minneapolis one. And so it's all things, horror, sci-fi, steampunk, a lot of art, like art in regards to like th- like movies, movie productions, stories. And has um, there ever been anybody else like big like Ross Marquand that they've been able? To yeah, get? yeah, they've had. Um, they actually asked about Henry Cavill this year, um, but the price tag was a little little too much for him. I think you. Yeah, um, but they've had um, they've had uh, both the actors from Jensen Ackles and the other guy from Supernatural. They've okay. had the car from Supernatural. They've had. Um, my brother a, and his wife are huge fans of super a ton of people like i we were we were picking his brain just about everyone um and uh, he's met he said he's met henry cavill a couple times um he uh he has um a couple times throughout the years he's had the person who does makeup for johnny depp um, Ooh, cool. so That's like big. like johnny depp only has one makeup person and so, like, he doesn't switch around. He's got the one person, and he's good friends with her. Um, so they have, like, people who come in and do makeup and have little makeup art art and stuff. It's huge. It's a three-day event. We're going to do that for um, my girlfriend's small business. Right, yeah. She, she makes jewelry, and she'll actually have a booth at Crypticon, and it's in Minneapolis. So um, my wife and I will actually be going as well. And um, if you are fans of the show and see us, feel free to say hello. Yeah. and um make sure so i'm very stop very excited yeah buy, i want his, his girlfriend makes jewelry so buy some buy some jewelry from her yeah so ross marquand i'm very excited i'm you know i'm a huge walking dead fan i'm a huge marvel fan uh so i'm i'm very excited that he was there i saw that and i i sent the text out i was very happy you said so. we are talking about that on the pod so yeah um yeah so i'm happy i'm excited for him i think he's a terrific actor so the fact that he's in minnesota not a lot like minneapolis is the only place in minnesota that gets people to come anyway so yeah not surprising that he's in minneapolis but very cool whenever an actor or somebody like that comes along yeah um 
So very cool. Awesome. My favorite sports guy, my favorite analyst in sports, Joel Klatt was in Minnesota today. Ross Marquand coming to Minnesota uh, yeah. next week. So very fun. Um, if you're in Minneapolis, stop by. If you like Ross Marquand, if you're a fan of Walking Dead, if you're a yeah. fan of yeah, Crypticon um, Minneapolis, Skull, feel free Crypti- to check him out. Crypticon Minneapolis. So um, yeah, but we just had that here. Um, otherwise, we have a couple little fun notes before we go through our last Marvel section. We just have let's just let's just drop our little fun segment here. Um, so. Video games. We're fans of video games. Uh, yes. You and I sure. played Fortnite for a little bit. It's yeah, not we, my cup of tea. We were we were pretty good in regards to like the combat part. Yeah. You know, shooting shooting people. It's but third building. person, which is a little odd. Building we sucked at and we couldn't compete with people when it, in regards to building. Yep, yep. I got I, um, the best I took was second place, and a dude basically just dunked on me. Um, I was one v one and he just built a tower. I couldn't do anything because I t- could build. I, could, I, I just like kind of stared at him and watched. I could build a. I could build a ramp. Like I could build a ramp and go forward yep, on the ramp. That's, that's about it. it. And uh, or I could just spin and spam, and it wasn't like any actual tactical building. It was just kind of placing things randomly. Yeah. Um. That guy built a strategic tower, stood up top, and one shot me basically. And I was like, <laughs> all right, yeah, that was fun. And yeah. that was basically the last game I played. And yeah, but anyway, Martin Luther King is going to be in Fortnite. Yeah, they're doing everything now. And uh, I get the Marvel run, I get the DC run, I get the even like the sports run. Um, it just seems very tasteless to me. ML- MLK, there's so you're telling me that like there's gonna be, and this is very distasteful, but you're telling me that there's gonna be a bunch of like Martin Luther King skins running around getting shot. That's getting just shot, say, getting shot. That just doesn't, doesn't sit I think well with is, me it, I, and it, I'm, it un- makes me really uncomfortable like it might be me projecting uncomfortableness when some or uncomfortability when somebody else like maybe they, maybe there's people out there that think it's totally fine but man this does not seem okay yeah it doesn't <laughs> and you know i get it they you know justin justin jefferson's gritty was the first nfl like promotion type dance that was in and i'm like all right like heck yeah like cool. the gritty they've had be- superheroes thanos yeah, yeah, um, Thanos, Deadpool, there's Deadpool event. Right, um, they've had a bunch of cool events that I've. They, they had John Wick. They've had, you know, they've done all these things. But Martin Luther, Martin Luther, Luther, Luther King. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't it. know. I hate it. I I'm, saw it on Fortnite, and I was like, "Why is MLK?" Is it MLK and Fortnite was trending? And I was and like, "I just saw MLK was trending," and I was like, "Oh, that's." I mean, ML, that's not, it's February. Well, like, yeah. it's it's not February, and oh. Yeah. It's because he's in Fortnite, where people are going to yeah. be able to shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my, I hate I it. I know. hate it. Yeah, it's. Um, let's move on from that. Uh, Thank you. Um, speaking of like new things in technology, the iPhone 13 is going to allow phone calls and texts without cell phone service because they are going to be um, utilizing EOSs. For those of you who don't know, those are Earth, uh, sorry, LEOSs, which are low Earth orbit satellites, which um, basically means you don't have to have service or cell connection and they can still communicate with those satellites. You'll still be able to make emergency calls, send text messages, and... Um, do phone calls. I don't believe you'll be able to use things like LTE. Like you won't be able to stream a YouTube video or something, but sure. you'll still be able to call and text and do service. Got so so communi- communication wise, that's, that's good. If you're in a place where you don't have service and need help. Right. And sure. so we're in Minnesota. If, there's a lot of places up North where they don't get <laughs> the cell phone service Yeah, middle um, of the woods in the middle of the woods. So uh, it's going to be good for those people. Um yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. And yeah. then the last little fun piece of news, which I am also very excited for, Jenna Malone, who you might recognize her from Hunger Games. She's the girl from, I believe, District 7. Oh, yeah, that okay, does... that makes sense. She's got the, yeah, okay. Yeah, she's the lumberjack people. Um, she's also in Sucker Punch, which we're both huge fans of that movie. Yeah, we went to go, did we see it in theaters? We saw it in theaters. We bought yeah. it like as soon as it came out, we watched yeah, it. because we place. were like, oh, a bunch of hot girls shooting guns. This sounds like a movie for us. And then we expected the worst. And then it turned out to be like this actually like deep. There's a story. There's yeah. a great story. Like, like a story about these how these four girls were abused. And by it's some, adaptable. Uh, like you can th- make, create your own story for some of them. Yeah, because it's, it's all in like their minds or something like that too. Surprise, surprise. It's a Zack Snyder movie. 
yeah it's so. really good and so anyway i know it's not a famous or popular like popular movie but we will we'll always it. we'll always remember it yeah and we'll i own, i used to own two copies of the movie yeah and now i own two copies so <laughs> um <laughs> you anyway. have, uh, swiped that well <laughs> <laughs> jenna malone um says she would love to do a prequel um, I'm not sure if they would shoot the prequel in the same style because her character was supposed to be at that insane asylum earlier than yeah, the main I character. Wanna, yeah. Bad uh, b- baby doll. B- baby doll. Yep. Um, her character, Rocket, was supposed to be there. I think it's Rocket. Uh, yeah. Or maybe Vanessa Hudgens was Rocket. But anyway, her character, I believe, was supposed to be there before Baby Doll. And so I think the story would probably just be uh, surrounding her. But anyway, she says she's open. She was Rocket. Then we have Sweet Pea and Blondie. Yeah. So um, I would love to see another one. I'm all for it. Zack Snyder is a hot commodity right now. Yeah. Ever, ever since his Justice League went so well. Um, yeah. Snyder Cut. Right. Snyder Cut. Oh. And I think um, so he's wanted a lot right now. Similar to like James Gunn. People want certain directors and stuff right now. And get it, give it to him. Like sure. uh, I'll go see it. Yeah. If it's like an HBO Max release, yeah, do um, that I would too. have to get HBO Max, but right I've got now. HBO Max. You can come over. <laughs> um, but yeah, that we just had some fun news there. I think that is exciting. And anytime new movies and stuff come out like that, like especially I like, consider that's like a cult movie now. Yeah, uh, I don't think it really should be. I think it's it doesn't get its credit. Every time I see people talk about it now, it's only positive. Yeah, like anytime I see people talk about it, it's yeah. positive. So clearly, it was just before its time somehow. Yeah, or just yeah. If that came out now, it'd be freaking. It'd be it'd be very very well received. It'd be, it more be, received. It would probably be considered like it, you would probably have fifty fifty in terms of like feminist movement. You'd probably have some people think that it was inappropriate with their outfits, but then you probably have a lot of people like me who it's like no, they're not only like yeah, their outfits are risque, but they're kicking ass the whole time they're wearing right yeah it's very it's very uh and it ends with them being successful like they overcome the bad bad guy and are able to escape uh yeah and so we'll do episode five next week which is the party thor episode so i think they're doing that it'll be something nice i think they're doing that on purpose to give us a little lightening up because um, for those of you that didn't see in like some of the previews and stuff and trailers of what if party Thor teams up with Killmonger party Thor teams up with Captain Carter. Um, so party Thor is somebody that we're going to see in that whole, the series finale of our se- season finale. Cause there's going to be a season two confirmed and season two is going to yep. have black uh, widow in it. Black widow. I just saw that. Yep. But um, the end, the season finale of uh, season one is Ultron ultimate Ultron um and party thor is one of the people that's fighting ultron and we also see in that trailer the watcher is the one opening the portals from different dimensions to help fight ultron got it cool so we'll be seeing that we'll be talking about uh, party thor next week probably some nfl and any other sports news we have in week one of the nfl so yeah um, and we'll be talking about a lot of other things. So make sure to tune in to uh, follow us on Twitter for updates on when that comes out. And um, for just like live opinions, we tend to tweet out. Oh, I tweet every day, like a lot. I also tweet every day uh, at Madden. <laughs> yeah, Madden. <laughs> um, I, I, I tweet every day. Anything, basically anything I see, I tend to do an, a reaction to it or just like what I think and um, I think we can be pretty funny on Twitter as well. So, you know, feel free to check us out. That's at Glazier Gamble at JJ Jaff Plain. Um, I'll put those up on screen here. And then um, feel free to check out the gaming channel. We've been streaming every night, 7 p.m. midnight uh, Central U.S. time, twitch.tv slash Glazier and Glazier Gaming on YouTube for the highlights and clips of those and just full gameplay. Um, hopefully we get some Madden there soon. <laughs> hopefully we get some madden on uh the on the i did YouTube today soon. right I yep did you today. did i think i've missed a day but i don't know you almost did you tweeted at like 11 30 nice okay so, so you haven't yet to miss a day um but yeah so we'll have more of that soon otherwise we just appreciate every one of you let's see if i got a good send off for you you know what i'll give you a a line i actually wrote down from the episode of what if today which was uh there is a fine line between devotion and delusion I thought that was uh, 
pretty, pretty impactful, a good statement. And I think everybody can take that just everything you do in life. Uh, if you, I mean, even, even, even this right here, it's like, we could, we could be delusional to think that, um, uh, we're not, we're, we could go, we could make it big with this, right, um, yeah. but we can also be devoted and being like, we're doing this for ourselves as well as, as right. everyone else. And so. you know, if you stay devoted to something that like tends to lead into a better product. And so it wouldn't be delusional to think it could go big. Yeah. But the, the fine, the fine line happens where you act as devotion. You don't act in that yeah. sense of delusion. Um, that's with anything. If you are a construction worker, be devoted. Don't be delusional in like, yeah. just don't, don't. The, the only thing where we, we see purpose. a very, very, very close line and it's, it's borderline teetering. We don't know if it's delusion or devotion is just playing league of legends games and expecting a different result. It's, it's, I would also say we've tried tread that fine line and expecting the Timberwolves to be good every year. Yeah. It's not always next year. Uh, yeah, so I would say we're devoted fans of the Timberwolves, and we find we are almost delusional when it comes to Minnesota sports in general. Yes. Um, and then League of Legends, we're pretty devoted, and we're on the fine line of delusional if we'll ever win again. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll send you off with that. Hope it was. I hope that was as impactful for you as it was for me. That hit me um, immediately. Started thinking about all the things I'm doing in life right now. So. Um, yeah, just think about that. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you um, gained some more. We actually gained another subscriber, two more followers on Twitch. So, you know, like you said, not, not delusional to think it making it big. Everything takes small steps. So yeah. uh, thank you all so much. And uh, GG. GG. Hey. Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> He's out of the poop. Okay, okay, okay. No, bring her back. <laughs> okay, have a good rest of the show. Okay. Bring her back. I, have any, I don't have any tacos, but I got this drink. Whenever I go to Taco Bell, the last time I went and the last couple times I've ever been there, I get two quesadillas. Nice. That's all I get. One for every inch. That's impressive. One for every half inch.